The Hammer films for which I have the most affection combine a couple of recurring elements that were secretly house style. Less conspicuous than Jack Asher's distinctive pale yet hyperchromatic Eastman color photography, Bernard Robinson's highly detailed production design work, James Bernard's signature stomping theme music, and breathlessly romantic incidental music. Me, but who are you? Or Molly Arbuthnot's elegant costuming, all of which became the template for all of their horrors. There are other elements that became draws in their own way, and 1967's Frankenstein Created Woman features all of them. The film's title is a play on Roger Vadim's And God Created Woman, about a young woman so beautiful she drives an entire town mad. Fittingly, this film is rife with the effluvia of grotesque masculine entitlement. Landlord! Wine! The best, or the best that your establishment can offer. Yes, gentlemen, white or red? A selection, gentlemen. And which do you recommend to your own taste, landlord? The white is very good. The white is very good. Excellent, we'll have the red. And see that it isn't corked, unless you want to lose your license. It's in excellent condition, gentlemen, I assure you. It had better be, or my father will hear of it. <laughs> <clears throat> the bedrock of Hammer Films is the worst of men given absolute power. The job of every other character is to challenge it. Their success rate is spotty. Oh no, landlord. Served by your charming daughter. <laughs> <laughs> now, gentlemen, by your daughter, landlord. She, she's out. Out, landlord? Yes. She went home early. A headache. Oh, I see. Carl. Christina, as pretty as a picture today. Enchanting, <laughs> isn't she? Please. Please? Please don't tease me. Were you teasing her, Johan? On the contrary, Anton. I was complimenting her. <laughs> Carl? No, Anton. You see? Your wine, gentlemen. Christina is to serve it. Here, three upper-class twits, as Monty Python would have it, frame a young man for murder, and Baron Frankenstein puts his brain in the body of his gorgeous girlfriend. She herself is lately the subject of cosmetic surgery to remove an enormous scar on her face. Everyone in the Hammer Frankenstein films is a victim of science gone awry, a collection of elaborately scarred visages damaged in some way, inside or out. And then there's the frigid autumn setting, leaves blowing in the street, coats pulled tightly. 
The movies that take place in the dreary English fall season, masquerading as Eastern Europe most of the time, capture the frustration and sadness of living in a time before changes in attitude and advances in technology. This was the hammer way of decrying censorship. If only things were different. If only people understood. The company's fixation on mad science mirrored the filmmaking apparatus and the way the rest of the world failed to understand the desire to make movies. The Hammer bosses needed to round out double bills and send them to every territory, but the directors wanted to make real art. Or anyway, they managed to. The beautiful woman whose brain is not her own stands in for all the work done by tireless craftsmen staffing the studio, whose producers and audiences did not understand them or care. Any want to know who I am, Johan? Mm, how did you know my name? I am Christina Cleave. <laughs> what you had to do, Christina. You may rest now. Between the tortured artist and misunderstood creature subtext, the confrontation of class and mores, the criticism of maleness, and the beautiful setting, the movie is practically a post-punk song. The haunting stare of its characters gazing at fates that cannot be changed, all while Peter Cushing's Baron Frankenstein humorlessly molds the lives of a dozen people to his specifications. That's the engine a Frankenstein-created woman. After watching the man ruin lives and create monsters, the film introduced an undercurrent of deep emotional trauma it would keep until the series finally, painfully, came to a close.